Welcome back to the RGR Football Channel, everybody. My name is Daniel Harms, your film analyst. We have a little bit of a different schedule today. Not going to have a film room for you as I'm on vacation, but instead I have a fantastic guest for you. You guys all know and love the Athletic Football Show, one of my favorite podcasts. Robert Mays, the host and showrunner of that football show, is here with me today. As you know, Matt Nagy now is the offensive coordinator in Kansas City, was the head coach of the Chicago Bears. There's lots of connections between your favorite team, the Chicago Bears, and now the Chiefs with their GM having been in Kansas City before. Um, so now Eric Bieniemy is no longer there. He's in Washington. There, He's going to have to figure his things out. But as Matt Nagy steps into a new, another offensive coordinator position with Patrick Mahomes instead of um, Alex Smith, uh, what do you expect to see as Matt Nagy's co um, contribution to this 2023 offense? And I think it's going to be similar to what we saw in the past. You know, it's always a unique circumstance when you're the offensive coordinator for a team like the Chiefs, where you know, the coach is the most important piece of the offensive planning. And there are some teams where this wasn't the case. I mean, you know, Andy Reid back at his time in Philadelphia, I think that you know, he's been pretty open about this and he's talked about this, that he kind of let go of some of that stuff. The installs and just the control of the offense and being the one that communicates the offense to the players. And I think the end of his time with the Eagles kind of informed what he wanted to do going forward and that I don't ever want to do that again. I want to be the mm -hmm. person who is in charge of what the offense looks like. And when you're working as the offensive coordinator on a team like that, you know, your role is a little bit diminished. You know, it's a little bit different than it is for a lot of other teams where you're the play caller. And I think that we saw Matt Nagy in that role, you know, when mm -hmm. the Chiefs really started building this version of who they wanted to be when Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey were there in 2017 with Alex Smith. Matt Nagy was the offensive coordinator then. So I think that there are some guys that are just better suited for these sorts of roles where I can yeah. be an idea guy. I can be someone who's working with the quarterbacks every single day when I'm not the one who's tasked with the play calling, the play sequencing, kind of the overall control of the in-game decisions, I can still have a lot of value and play a huge role in the way that the offense is constructed. We see that all the time where when guys are ultimately get put in the big chair and they have to start calling plays, it's just not for them, but they're still extremely valuable members of the coaching staff. And I don't think it's an accident that Andy Reid wanted Matt Nagy back because I'm sure they've had a lot of success together they have and i'm sure they have a good working relationship so i expect them to kind of hit the ground running because they've been doing this for so long and Nagy was there last year you know yeah it's it's funny as soon as things started to happen in chicago with his his head coach in kansas city we all kind of expected as soon as he was released he was being in kansas city one way shape or form whether it was this offensive assistant or he ended up being the quarterback's coach um i love watching the games you can always see Patrick Mahomes comes off the field. He comes, sits right next to Matt Nagy. Like they have a very good relationship. They're always talking about what they can do better and how he can, the, the, the different plays that they run and how they can always tweak things here and there. And the fact that he always goes to the bench, sits right next to Matt Nagy is, is a really convincing, optimistic approach to how I think they're going to operate this year. And people really kind of gloss over uh, and specifically Chiefs fans gloss over that Alex Smith had his best season ever with Matt Nagy as the offensive coordinator. Like it wasn't, this was not a mistake. I know Tyree Kill changed some of that as well for Alex Smith, but they, they really let loose on, on some of those and the way defenses are playing right now have, has really forced the Chiefs to change how they attack defenses. And we saw the Bengals in the, in 2021, just say, we're not going to rush it. We're not doing it. We're going to make you think and drop, defensive ends into quick the rpo passing lanes and to just put a, a roof over everything and we've now we've seen them go from the explosive 50 touchdown season 5,000 yards in his, his his first season as a starter to okay I'll, i'm gonna get the 12 to 15 yard drive and beat you that way and really defenses just have not figured out anymore how to do that and even with last year they were still they were like okay we're just going to put the top over we're not going to deal with it anymore and they decided that they were going to start using more 13 personnel last year i did a video before last season actually talking about how this was going to be more impactful for the chiefs in 2022 it ended up happening and that really did allow them to change because they still faced a ton of light boxes out of 13 personnel. Defenses just did not want to be it, get beat by Patrick Mahomes. So seeing how that's been incorporated last year, what 
if any changes do you expect it to, that they might throw out this year? Just a little tweaks here and there. If it's going to be 13 personnel or 12 personnel, a heavy-ish personnel, they now don't have a fullback on the roster. They've committed to that. What change-ups do you think they're going to have this year? It's a great question because I wonder how teams are going to continue to play them. You know, last year we saw just a massive uptick in the amount of man coverage that teams were playing against the Chiefs because Tyreek Hill wasn't there anymore. So our teams are going to continue to do that. Is their passing game kind of going to be built around understanding we're going to get a lot of man, we're going to have a lot of man beating concepts? Are they thinking one step ahead and teams aren't going to play them that way because teams playing a bunch of man against them didn't work? One, okay. because you still have Travis Kelsey, you have Patrick Mahomes as a scrambler where he does an insane amount of damage. I don't know what the next step looks like because I don't know how defenses are going to react. But the way that it looked last year with this kind of full transition to the version of the offense that I think we all kind of felt was coming in 2021, mm -hmm. right? Where they had, they brought in some different sort of body types on the off on the offensive line. It seemed like, okay, we got some bigger bodies. We're going to see some more gap scheme runs. We're going to see them lean into a little bit more of a physical mindset because on top of being able to beat teams with 12 and 15 play passing drives that are strung yeah. together where you're working underneath, you need to be able to run the ball if teams are going to play you that way. And I think that was one of the coolest things that I, we saw last year is that that version of the Chiefs finally clicked into place. It's like we can beat you underneath consistently, which is ball control passing, but we can also just run the ball at will when we want to because we have a physical back now that we trust and we have an offensive line that's built to do that. And now I just don't know what you're supposed to do. I, I just don't know what you're <laughs> supposed to do structurally to what they're doing because you know we've talked about this on our show a bunch of different times. That drop eight stuff that the Bengals were doing in the playoffs two years ago that was partially driven by just a lack of fear in their running the ball down your throat. Well, yeah. if now they're going to do that and they're going to be able to throw the ball out of 13 personnel and they can still spread it out and have one of the best five pass catchers in the league just absolutely destroy you on third down or the quarterback is going to be able to scramble for seven yards on third and six and just make you want to bury yourself, you know, 20 feet deep into the ground. If you're a defensive coordinator, I, I just don't know what the answer is. Like they have so mm -hmm. many, answers right now to any question a defense can present i don't know what the next set of questions should even look like yeah that's a, that's a great point and talking about the run game specifically um i just did a video on the chiefs run game last week um and if you look before the bye they had 107 rush yards on average per game and after the bye they jumped up for, all the way through the postseason to 120 but that's that that shows you that they really did make an impact on that. And it's not just the, you know, this structure outside zone, inside zone, power gap steam. It's it's Patrick Mahomes scrambling. It's the different ways they used Kadarius Tony adding on to that with the jet sweep motions. And they can just do so many different things to attack a defense to stress with not just pre-snap motions, but jet sweeps, moving linebackers around and trying to get them off their off their game and run one way, come back with the other. So it, it's such a it's such a dynamic offense and Patrick Mahomes's leap as a mental quarterback has really allowed them to just do whatever they want to. He can make the changes at the line. We saw them stop having to throw all the RPOs instead handing all the handing off the ball on some of those RPO looks last year really did help them. Um, something that happened currently in the next last couple of days, DeAndre Hopkins saying that just, just quick sidebar here because this is, Deion Hopkins is still out there and he's saying he's waiting on the chiefs um, to make a decision on what he's going to do next, do the next. What, what do you think about the addition to DeAndre Hopkins in Kansas city? Just, just quickly. I would be surprised if they did yeah. it. I just think that there are other areas where they need to, again, spend like cash. And if they extend Chris Jones and mm -hmm. that brings his cap number for 2023 down from where it is right now, I still think that they have more priorities in terms of, how they're actually using their resources. So I would be surprised if they did it. And they, they've also just comprised the receiving group a little bit different these days, yeah. right? Like they're spending less money on it. The way that it's built is a little bit different. So I would be surprised if they ended up making that move, but who knows? I mean, there's a chance yeah. that they see a rare opportunity and they say, this is a skill set that we don't currently have, which they don't really, you know, really their only big bodied receiver. That's going to be a part of the rotation right now is MVS is more of a yeah. speed, speed field stretcher type. So they could look at DeAndre Hopkins and just say, this is a skill set we don't have within the offense. We don't know what Rishi Rice is going to be, but I think that them drafting him with where they did combined with the other investments that they've made in the receiving group, I'd be surprised. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I feel the same way. And I've always been kind of more surprised if they would do it. Um, it wouldn't, I guess it would make sense for them if they feel like, well, if we can move some money around and kind of make this happen and give 
especially if they see Rasheed Rice as that type of player in the future, give him someone in the locker room that can kind of help him develop that in, in the same way, shape, or form. So uh, that's the only thing that makes sense to me in, in that regard. But thank you again very much for your time. I love getting to hear you guys on your podcast. So getting to talk to you and have a little bit of a one-on-one -on -one with you was a fantastic time. I would uh, appreciate everybody. Please go listen to the Athletic Football Show if you don't. It is by far my favorite football podcast and one of the best out there. So do that. Subscribe to theirs, uh, their work as much as you guys can. We will be back with you guys as soon as possible. I'm not entirely sure when this video release, probably Wednesday, if this is a Wednesday. So make sure you guys are hitting that like, the sub for the channel, and continue with the RGR channel, you guys. We'll see you guys next time. Have a great day.